the coal mine for clouds are slipping down. Cause I make a little money hauling coal by the ton. But when Saturday rolls around, I'm too tired for having fun, too tired for fun. Just working in the coal mine, going down, 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 working in the coal mine. About to slip down, working in the coal mine, going down, 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 working in the coal mine. There's a certain girl I've been in love with a long, long time. Well, I'm Alan Toussaint from New Orleans, a pianist, arranger, writer, uh, and I've spent. Uh, I was born in New Orleans, and I will live there all of my life. But I must say, one of the pleasures has been coming to Amsterdam. This is my second time here, and I love it dearly. Certain girl. Well, when I was a young man, I liked Professor Longhead very much. Uh, all of all piano players in New Orleans loved Professor Longhair in that time, and uh, Fats Domino. But uh, even aside from New Orleans, I, I like Ray Charles, and of course all of the great jazz pianists. I love Art Tatum, and uh, in fact, I think I like everybody. No, I'm not. I couldn't say I'm blues and leave it at that because I do know some wonderful blues people who are strictly blues and nothing more, nothing less or nothing more. Uh, but I will play the blues because I love the blues and I, I feel the blues, but I feel other things just as much. I feel a waltz, a Wayne Kane waltz just as much. I love Vivaldi, Bo Diddley, Bernstein, James Brown. Yes, I, I really like the whole gamut and rap and hip hop and all. I've tried time and time again. We end up there's nothing but friends. There's a certain girl I've been after a long, long time. I can't tell you. Blues. Well, we love the blues. So much came from the blues. Uh, early on, before all of these, all of these other genres uh, seep into our makeup. Blues and gospel was it. Of course, in some street things for other reasons. But uh, the blues told such important stories back in the day. And uh, good, it's good to say rhythm and blues too, because as long as there was blues, the slow blues, there's, there was always a shuffle or something upbeat from the same people. Because you can't stay down all day and all night. You got to get up and shake it every now and then. Uh, but blues is, uh, is the forerunner of m most of the music. In New Orleans, when I grew up, uh, in my neighborhood, which was a very humble neighborhood, I heard much blues then because the, the old men when they got off from work they would take the guitar and go sit on the porch and play and just about all of them played blues, 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 blues. Uh, for one thing they didn't have enough time in their lives to away from their jobs to develop anything uh, beyond that. Also it's just where they came from and what they wanted to play and I heard that all, the, all of the time. And sometime very late at night, we'd have characters who would uh, come home after they've gotten tanked up uh, in a joint. They would come walking down the street, blowing a harmonica, 12.30 at night, on the way home. And we'd hear that blues. And some of the grown-ups, of course, would think that's ridiculous for them to be making that noise at night. But those of us like myself, we looked forward to it. It 
was a wonderful time uh, in the uh, middle 50s and even early, but middle 50s especially on into the 60s. Uh, Irma Thomas uh, and Benny Spellman, they were an Aaron Neville, and, and I would say uh, mostly 60s, uh, yeah, late 50s into the early 60s. That's during the time of It's Raining and Rule of My Heart and things like that. Um, uh, we had a group of people who would come to my parents' house where I live, and they would spend the day, uh, Ernie Cato, Willie Harper, Aaron Neville, uh, sometime Chris Kenner, and Irma Thomas was the only girl with us. And I would write uh, one, one of the uh, singers there a song, and everyone in the room would sing back up to it just to get started with it. And then while they go and rehearse it further, the artists, I'd write another song for one of the other artists, and everyone there would sing back up behind them. So on some early recordings of Reverend Nero, Aaron Neville, you might hear Irma Thomas way in the background because we were, that's the way we were doing it then. And we lived like that. Uh, uh, well, they'd come every day. Even I, They didn't live with me, but they came and we spent the day every day just about. We had a wonderful time. That was our way of life. Well, Katrina, uh, I lost all of my things, stuff, and house. Uh, Katrina was uh, along that line for his uh, water rising and taking things. I lost everything but a, a pack of videos that I had taken with me to the hotel to go through them to see what I wanted to edit. Everything else was gone. But uh, I wouldn't have left. I stayed until four days after the storm, but martial law came that we had to leave town. So I left town and stayed away for a month and a half, I'd say. And when I did go back to take a look and saw all of the, all of the devastation and everything that I had had been uh, drowned, you might say, or baptized, I, I thought right away that it all served me well till this day. So I'm ready to go forward and it was all right with me. Well, all of the things that didn't make it through the flood, and I, I knew everything that I had, and I worked with it every day. It was a, an extension of me. That's what I meant by serving me well. Uh, I did then and still do. I wake up to get to my music. So whatever tools and equipment I have, uh, that's what served me well. And all of that was gone, and including the house. Uh, so whatever it was to me, I dearly appreciate it, but I didn't uh, mope over it being gone. I'd say, well, it was good until that day, and this is a new day. When something uh, what can appear to be bad happened, it's not always as bad to me. Uh, if, if I'm still here and, can, and I wasn't uh, hurt physically or even mentally, I'm all right. I feel that way because my best tools are in my head, and I have those, so I'm fine. Do you, do you feel that your music is like filled with positive energy or not? Well, if I, would, if I was to pay attention to it, I, I guess so. And it's not that I deliberately try and do that. Uh, if that's what comes to me as inspiration, uh, that's how it goes. So I, I'm for that. I, I'm glad that you said that yourself. Uh, there was an observation that I made what, that was going on when I wrote Freedom for the Stallion for Lee Dorsey. And it, it says uh, that we need help on how to treat each other. Uh, that was very sincere. But I'm not political. I don't shake my fist at the establishment or anything. But I do care how people treat each other and, and how we are being treated. And Freedom for the Stallion uh, was a song that says that. Uh, if, if, if it appear that I'm preaching by saying what I'm saying, well, I'll take the tag, but uh, I, I think a preacher have to hear a calling and answer it. And I haven't heard the calling to be a preacher. Oh, yeah. what, 
what profession fits you the best? Pianist, pianist, and a producer. Pianist and producer. Songwriter, too. But I must say, in the early days when I was writing many songs, I wrote songs just because the artist didn't have a song of his own. And whoever didn't have a song, I'd write it for them. And most people didn't. So I wrote songs most of the time because a song was needed. Uh, and I'm glad it was now because uh, so many songs wouldn't have been written. Also, because of who the artist uh, was at the time, and even it would be that way now, or who they would like to be, I use all of those things to write songs for them. So it, it's like making a suit or a gown for someone. Uh, I use them as the uh, template for what I'm doing. And that has, that has to do with the attitude, as well as uh, highlights in the voice, uh, how dearly they feel about things. No, the meters, the meters is a, a when I, I was produ producing them is a far cry from producing Lee Dorsey or Aaron Neville or someone, or especially Lee Dorsey. I would write the song, teach it to Lee Dorsey, tell him when to come in, when not to, get the, all the musicians together, write the parts out, rehearse them, and set up a good atmosphere. With the meters, they were such a self-contained group led by Art Neville. And they would rehearse, and by the time they come in ready to, to the studio to, to record, they had rehearsed and got it down to a fine point. So I just set up a good atmosphere for them to do what they already had. And they did it extremely well. Oh, the sound came with my studio at the time. That's what we were shooting for, whatever that sound was. It was just something, everything we did there, we thought it had our particular sound. It was your personal studio as well. I yes, yes. Oh, C Saint, yes. Me and Marshall Seahorn. C for Seahorn and the last, my last part of my name, Toussaint or Toussaint. C Saint. Right. Well, Cosmo used to be the studio during the early Fats Domino days and the Little Richard days, where all of those recordings were recorded. But Cosmo closed down, because if he wouldn't have closed down, I would never have built a studio. But Cosmo closed down, so there was no other studio around suitable at the time, so I, I had to, me and my partner had to, my business partner had to uh, build a studio, and we did. I'm glad we did. Oh, I just dearly love New Orleans. Uh, I, I was born there and raised there, and I'll be there all my life. And I still walk around like a tourist sometimes, looking at things. I want to know everything that's everywhere. Uh, it's all good to me. And there's loads of music and, and fine cuisine everywhere, and hospitality. And we still have a lot of the old world charm, as far as the architecture and all. It's a delightful place. It's a wonderful city. I still feel that way after all of this time. I really enjoy this trip, being here. Uh, this, and to see all the waterways, the canals, and all the bicycles, and it's just a wonderful place. And uh, uh, the structures, the buildings, it's a fine place. And our audience was impeccable, just perfect. Uh, I, I love Amsterdam. Hi, I'm Alan Toussaint in Amsterdam and I'm at dbluesradio.com and I'm loving it.